What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 38 in the 8th grade math questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question tells us that a line passes through the points 1, 4, and 5, 8, and a second line passes through the points 2, 10, and 6, 4, and we're supposed to try to figure out at what point the two lines intersect. So to do a question like this, you'll need to know how to graph a line between two points, and to do it precisely, you'll need to find your slope first. So we will go over how to find each of these. Um, but for now, I'm going to use the magic of editing to pull up my graphing whiteboard. Right. Okay, start at 133. Ta-da! Um, so I'm going to go ahead and draw my points from my two lines. I'm going to start with where the problem started, with the line created by 1, 4, and 5, 8. So that's this point here, x of 1 and y of 4. And then x of 5, y of 8. And now I look at my second line, and the problem tells me that it's made up of the points 2, 10, and 6, 4. So that's x of 2, y of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Puts me right there. And then x of 6, y of 4 would put me right here. And now, I said at the beginning of the problem that it's going to be much easier to do this if we can find our slopes of, our, of both of our lines. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll use the actual slope formula here. So for this first line, I've named my x1, y1, x2, and y2. And I'll go ahead and plug those into the slope formula. And just to write that down... All right, I know that the lamp that I have over to the side is creating a weird effect here, but um, hopefully you have the sound up so you can hear what I'm doing as well as see it. All right, so for the first line, my slope is y2 is 8 minus y1 is 4 divided by x2 is 5 minus x1 is 1. 8 minus 4 is 4. 5 minus 1 is 1. So I'm going to call, or wait, 4, force of habit. I'm going to call this slope 1 over 1. This is really just 1. But remember, this tells me that I'm going one up for every one I'm going right. And so as I figure this out, um, I'm actually going to take my purple pen. I'll draw this line, and I'm going to remember that just so I can see what exactly is happening. But now to find the slope of my second line, I will once again name x1 y1, x2, y2. Okay, if you look, you'll see that some stuff mysteriously appeared here. That's me continuing the one up, one right pattern on um, these two lines, and it looks like we're hitting it at about 4-7. Uh, that was due to a mistake that I made, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the problem from here and see if we can hit the same point by tracing the pattern on this line. So let me go ahead and plug our x's and y's in here. Uh, my y2 is 4 y1 is 10, x2 is 6, x1 is 2, 4 minus 10 is negative 6, 6 minus 2 is positive 4, and this can simplify into negative 3 over 2, which according to the way that I like to think about slope, tells me that I'm going 3 down for every 2 that I'm going right. So let's try that pattern out from the point 2, 10. If I go... 3 down and 2 right. 2 right would actually get me to 4. 3 down from 10 actually gets me to 7. So I've basically found slope-related patterns, continued those until 
I found the point 47 as an intersection for both of these. But you can actually find this a bit of an easier way with the actual graph paper that you have by um, drawing these precisely and actually figuring out just by looking uh, how far up and how far right and how far down you're going on each of your lines. Um, so you will have better tools than I did to solve this. But I am still glad that I went over this with the method of finding slope because I think it is an important method to have in your back pocket when solving a problem like this. So just to, for the finality of it, I'm going to bubble in my answer. Point C, X of 4, Y of 7. 